Hi everyone, this is Joshua from Future Morphs. Um, it's corn snake breeding season right now. We're in the uh, uh, end of April. Um, I've got a clutch today and I wanted to show you how I set up the eggs, which uh, medium I use and stuff like that. Um, so I will uh, flip the camera and we'll be back with you in one second. And we're back. Uh, if you speak Dutch and you follow me for a longer time on YouTube, you know that my editing skills are like zero. Uh, but oh well. Um, uh, I will get the female in a minute, but I have to ask my wife Kim to help me film because I need two hands for that. Um, I want to show you how I set up my um, incubator box. I use a, a, a 3 liter Praplast. Um, it has some ventilation holes in it, you can see it. Uh, it's not really necessary, but I use these boxes as well for uh, transporting snakes and stuff like that. Um, in my opinion, a couple of air holes isn't that big of a problem. Uh, you might lose a little bit of moisture, but um, you can add it if need be. But um, I use a, a 1.3 liter uh, Praplas box, almost full as you can see, uh, with vermiculite. This, this is dry uh, vermiculite right now. And I use uh, a, uh, a plastic cup. This is 200 milliliters of uh, warm water. Um, like I started like mixing it um, like this uh, two years ago probably. Um, I used to do it just by feel and by hand. It also works well, but uh, I figured well it's better to have some sort of a, a good mixture so you know you never make it too wet or too dry. I just shake it up a bit just to mix it. And like they say in French, voila. Uh, you have a mixture now, um, if you squeeze it, it becomes like almost a, a bowl, but not really, uh, no water is coming out, it isn't too, look it's still falling apart. Uh, so in my experience, this is a good uh, ratio, uh, water to vermiculite. Damn. Um, I also will show you my cards, uh, it is in Dutch, but of course it's, it's not too difficult. Um, the male was a sunkissed ghost. Possible uh, of 50% possible at Motley from 2015, and the female as a sun kissed had caramel hypo, so amber, uh, possible at striped. Uh, I first introduced them uh, on the 26th of March, so that is uh, one month ago. So she was pretty early. Uh, I, I usually leave the mail in there for two days, so the 28th, if you can read my handwriting, uh, uh, the mail got off. Uh, the 10th of April, uh, I added the mail. Two days later, I took him off. And the 18th, the female uh, shedded her skin um, and I felt some lumps. So um, I know well, something's going on. So that was the pre lay shed because today's the 25th and uh, she laid her eggs. And I will show you my simple system as well. This is the female. Look, also the same for sun kissed head caramel hypo. Um, if the card is on this side, like you can see almost everywhere now, um, nothing is going on, no breeding, uh, no shedding, no egg laying, no stuff like that. If I add a male uh, in the box, I do it like this. So here you can see uh, there's a male and the female uh, in with the female. Um, just easy for me to search through all the mails and if I uh, take the mail out, I put it back here again. And if there's, um, if the female has shed and I think she might be laying eggs in like uh, two weeks, one and a half weeks, I put it on this side. So you can see it like here as well. So it's really, it's a simple system, but for me, I come into the room and if I just have a couple of minutes, I just check uh, uh, which females had, did they lay eggs. If I have to switch males, I just have to look at the ones that are here. Uh, so it works for me. It's, uh, it's simple, but it works. Um, of course, uh, after uh, I put all the clutch info uh, on this as well, I already put the tree uh, on the left top, this is the third clutch of this season. Uh, and I will show you the female right now, real quick. I think she's done laying. Pretty nice clutch. And yeah, now the box is of course a little bit messed up. Um, but I use, uh, it's called, uh, the product uh, is Tierwool. It's sort of lignocell, but it's a little bit in between lignocell and wood chips. Um, 
uh, a water bowl from plastic so you can just toss it out and put a new one in and of course with the breeding season they get a braplas box as well with a hole in the side uh, with some uh, sphagnum moss uh, which is damp of course so that's the basic setup um, I will uh, grab my camera wife Kim and we will uh, take the female out and uh, collect her eggs but like I said I need two hands for that so see you in one second again and we are back again. Uh, my wife Kim is uh, making the movie, so I have two hands available. Um, I usually the, just a little work area table. Um, I always put the females on here. Uh, it's easy to work with and to maneuver, and nothing can fall. Let me see if she's really ready. Looks like it. Sometimes you can see uh, some lumps here at the end, so you know she still has some eggs in her. Uh, also, uh, the eggs are like glued together, so that usually is a sign that they have been here for a while. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning right now, so she probably probably laid them uh, tonight, of this night. Uh, how I remove the eggs is a little bit different depending on how the female acts and uh, how she's coiled around the eggs. Sometimes I just try to take the eggs, especially if they are like lumped together. Sometimes I remove the female, um, but we'll see. This is usually quite a relaxed female, so we'll see how she reacts. Well, that wasn't too bad. Um, I remove mo most of the moss, sometimes I like this in between here, I just leave it on. Um, before I put them in the vermiculite, I count the eggs. 18 eggs, let me count again. Yep, 18 eggs, so that's not too bad for a first time breeding female. Um, I make a little bit of a dent in the vermiculite so that they are covered up. I always, um, like this egg is like floating, so I put some vermiculite uh, on, uh, on the egg, so every egg is at least touching a little bit of vermiculite. And something I started doing just this year as like a test, um, uh, I take some uh, damp moss, add a little bit of extra water, um, and put it around the eggs. Um, uh, I've saw somebody else do it and um, well I guess uh, you get a little bit more moisture uh, on all the eggs so less chance of dehydration. Um, my only problem is that uh, you cannot see the eggs really well so I'm not sure if uh, I like it too much but at least I will give it a try. Uh, of course I close the lid with my wet hand. Uh, just a little piece of tape, really easy. Uh, oh well, Kim can maybe uh, film uh, this uh, the note on there as well. I uh, just have to add the number of eggs. It's like basically the same um, information uh, that is on the um, information of the female, of course. So which is the male, the female, uh, but also important the clutch number. It's also on the paper as you can uh, as you saw before. Uh, let me also write in Dutch and speak English, that's difficult. Uh, uh, the date that they were laid, uh, so about two months later they are... Uh, what are you filming now? Yeah, you can film this on me, but like... Uh, oh, uh, come back uh, to this again, uh, by the way, Kim. Um, it's a strange way, maybe, uh, I use 18... Uh, like this is 18 fertile eggs and zero slugs. So um, it's not 18 males and females, usually like 2.2 means two males, two females. Um, something I just thought of myself uh, for me, so I know this female ate 18 good eggs and zero slugs. Um, because in my experience you see um, females that have like 10 slugs in the clutch and sometimes the rest of the eggs also go bad. So uh, just so I know all good eggs, nothing wrong with them. Um, then of course the female goes back, but before... Uh, I really close her. I always take the female out and just uh, look at her, of course, look at the belly because you usually, uh, if they have an egg left, you can see them. But also I let them crawl like this. And if there's one egg or maybe more eggs left, like she's egg bound, you can feel a, a, a really easy lump. But she's completely empty, so. 
the paper goes back on the left side because she's done for now. Uh, uh, I already know it, like the tree is really important. In my iPhone I uh, have a little list every year with every breeding so even if I'm at a reptile show I can just say well this is from clutch number three so I know which is the male and the female and stuff like that so I know all the genetics and then let's go to the incubator come on guys follow me uh, that's just in the room next to here uh, this is a, a, a coca-cola refrigerator but I uh, transferred it to a uh, uh, an incubator so the cooling element is out and uh, uh, there's some heat cables the ventilate, ventilator sorry uh, is uh, taking the hot air from uh, the top blowing it out on the bottom so it circulates uh, and the good thing is uh, you can fit four bra plast boxes on one shelf and two high so I can uh, add a lot here I used to have a bigger incubator but uh, this will do for now so uh, the third clutch, uh, let's put it on this side, it's easier for me, I just do one, two, three, four, five, six and stuff like that. So uh, so yeah, in two months we will have some sunkist and hypo sunkist babies and let's hope uh, to prove out the motley and the stripe gene, but that's a small chance of course. But Let's close the door, turn on the lights. Uh, I hope you uh, learned something uh, from this video, if not then, uh, oh well, maybe next time. Uh, we'll see you next video and of course I will be doing that in English as well. Thank you guys and see you next time.